All right, hello everyone. This is Rosemary Jane with the Learning Technologies team. And we are meeting here today to look at using YouTube. Here is our agenda. Let me put this in a full size. All right, um, as I said, um, you're with me and moderating our chat is Ashley Badgett. Our agenda today, we're gonna look at YouTube. We're going to look at your channel, the YouTube studio, processing videos, going live, and recommended advanced settings. So that's our agenda. I'm gonna also drop a link to this in the chat right now. So that you can have a copy of that agenda. All right, now that you have the agenda, we're going to get started. If you are the type who wants to follow along with me as we work, you could pop open, um, look at all those people hopping in the agenda, cool. Um, you can pop open your tab resize, split into two, into two tabs, and you can follow the meeting in this window. I do recommend if you've had a grid view on that you turn it off. I will also tell you that um, I skipped this earlier. Layout, um, because this is mostly a presentation, Spotlight seems to be the best one. It'll make your screen the largest. Uh, if you don't need to be able to view all the participants. I just love seeing your little icons. All right, if you want to follow along, you can split open your tabs. Um, I'm going to continue in a full screen. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is talk about YouTube. YouTube is accessed through the Google Apps icon. It's often referred to as the waffle. I do recommend for everything that you are doing, you're using the Chrome web browser. YouTube is actually a Google product. Um, so anytime something is a Google product or authenticates with Google, it's best to use a Chrome browser. And of course, to all district staff and students, I always recommend that we are signed in to our work account or school account and sync is on. Right, when you open up a fresh uh, tab of Google, you've got that Google Apps menu or the waffle, you can click on that. And just keep scrolling until you come across YouTube. Now, many of you, with everything you've got going on, you haven't even gotten that far yet, and that's okay. Um, as you can see, that we've got all sorts of levels of um, tech savvy going on, plus a little bit of my classic country music. Yes, that's what I was listening to last night. Um, it'll bring you to your YouTube. So, um, so I've, right here, I've got an art teacher from Woodford Paidea that I'm following. I'm subscribed to her, and she's doing some awesome um, activities that she's posting to YouTube. And then I've got the uh, Cincinnati Public Schools page. I follow that as well. I excuse me, subscribe to that as well. So you can add subscriptions. All right, so we're in YouTube. And if you're wondering how, well, how do I follow somebody or add a subscription? Well, I'm going to show you by going to my channel. And so if you're ever on a video, and that video is in YouTube, then if you click on the information below it, <clears throat> so we'll use, uh, one of mine from last week for that, this example. Let's say that there's a video that's come out by the district. Um, you saw the one with um, oh, Kimberly, I can't remember her last name, but it was right on the front corner, the CPS one. If you're on a video, if you just look right below the video, many people often overlook the power of the message below the video. Okay, so um, you can like and you can share and you can even create playlists. We'll look at some of these settings in YouTube. But um, if you click on show more, there's often a lot of hidden things in the information right here. And if I realize like, oh, this is a video that I, I don't wanna miss another one like this, you can click on that individual. It could either be the Cincinnati Public School account or an individual teacher, click on them. And then um, I'm in my own account, but it will give you the subscribe button. So I'm going to copy in my YouTube channel now actually Ashley I already did that but she's yeah she's always a step ahead of me I should have known better all right so she's added that so for me when I go to my channel I'm in either customized channel or I can go to the YouTube studio for you um, my videos will appear and you have the button subscribe so you can start off by doing that now and then um, as you watch other videos uh, released either to Schoology um, released on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, or our district website, if they're a YouTube video, go ahead and subscribe to that, um, to that individual or group. All right, so this is just a really quick walk into YouTube. Now, some of you, when you log into YouTube, 
you click here and it does not say your channel. It says create your channel. And I would recommend that you all do that here today. If you're working along with me, you're gonna create your channel because we're going to go into some of those topics in your channel in the YouTube studio, which you cannot access until you create your channel. Um, we're gonna look at some processing settings, going live and recommended advanced settings. And you won't be able to get to any of those unless you have a channel. So if you already have a channel, it'll just say your channel and you can click on it and go there now. If it says create channel, go ahead and walk through that for a moment and I'll wait for just a minute while you turn on your channel. Now, if you're just um, watching and following along, then um, no worries, you don't have to create a channel, but I'm just giving a pause um, so that people can create their channel. So again, uh, let me just show you how I navigated there in a clean instance of Google, right? And here is the waffle, it'll appear naturally. You can always go to youtube.com too, but I'm just showing you how to get to there, the apps menu. Click on YouTube. It will open up YouTube to your home. It'll land on this view. Anything that you have recently watched or subscribed to or anything like that, um, you know, just be aware, like if somebody sent you a link and you clicked on it and watched it, it's gonna be here in your um, recently watched. So, uh, but then we're just going to look at your profile icon. Now, again, that's gonna come right in if you're signed in and syncing. If not, you may have to click and uh, select sign in to YouTube. So you'll notice at the beginning, I said we, we use Chrome and we sign in, we sync. So when you click on not up here on your profile, okay, that's the Chrome browser profile, but here, your YouTube profile, that's where you'll find create your channel or your channel. And we're gonna go there now. All right. Couple of things for you to know about your channel. It is divided into subcategories. You've got your home, which is basically the landing page for everything uh, that you have. What appears, oh, excuse me, what appears to um, the public is anything that you have created that you made public. But then on this button, videos or this tab, all videos that I have ever um, added are in this area but they only appear to other users if I made them public. Playlists. Playlists are things that I have built. Um, I'll show you how to build a playlist today. For instructional purposes, there's a lot of great reasons why you might put together a YouTube playlist. For professional learning experience, there's a, great, uh, a lot of great reasons to put together YouTube playlists. So I've organized my playlist into virtual trainings and PD sessions like this one. It will be found in that playlist after today. I have another one that I created, Tech Talk Tidbits. Um, these are all short five minute videos I create using Screencastify and I upload them there. And it's just a commitment to uh, sharing information on um, tech topics in five minutes or less. Then um, I've been doing a lot of work with the early childhood uh, education department. And so we decided that they needed their own playlist on my channel. Um, what I did there is I didn't create any new content, but I pulled in, videos from virtual training and from my tidbits that I thought would help an early childhood teacher and they're all there in one playlist. Um, I created another one just last week called Parents Corner and again it's not that I created something new but what I'm doing is curating these collections of videos that parents should watch. Now another cool thing about playlists is it does not need to be your created content at all. Matter of fact, you can never, or you could, um, you could never use the video creation, uploading, or going live. You could never use that and still have extensive playlists. You can create those playlists to be public, as these are, unlisted, meaning people can only see them if you share the link with them, or private only for you. All right, um, channels uh, isn't a feature. Yeah, they're. The channel feature, I have not used it, so, um, but then there's a few more you could go through. So, we are looking right now at YouTube, and let's make sure I stay on topic, your channel, and the YouTube studio. Now, when you have created a channel, you'll notice this button does appear, YouTube studio, or it's in the drop down here. It actually takes you into a separate YouTube application. YouTube studio is a uh, partner application of YouTube. And this is where you can create, edit, um, and do some advanced settings on videos. Now, looking at my YouTube studio, 
if I go into videos, when I first showed you the videos tab, that was everything that I had published, but this is my studio. So this is the behind the scenes. So everything that I made public is there, but so is, I made a lot. Um, so is everything that I've created and made unlisted. And even some things that if I created them private, I can access them here in my YouTube studio. So for those of you who maybe um, played around with Screencastify and you did the save to, the save to YouTube option, Screencastify defaults and uh, saves the video as a private video just off the bat because you don't do a lot of editing as far as how the video is going to be displayed except the content message. So that, as well as some other things, would be sitting here in your studio. You could access them and change the settings. And we'll get into YouTube Studio a little more in depth in a moment. Um, this is also where you can access and build, um, do editing work on your playlist. So these are the playlists I've built. If I wanted to edit or change them, I can do it from here in my studio. So again, we looked at YouTube. Um, YouTube channel, and we're looking at YouTube Studio. I'll return to YouTube Studio. What I'm doing is giving you a quick uh, sort of tour of the different um, aspects of YouTube. Right, going back here, we looked a little bit at channel, studio, processing videos is next, going live, and recommended advanced settings. So. What we're gonna actually start with is just on your YouTube channel, this little button right here, create a video or post. When you click on that, you're given two options, to upload a video, meaning a video you already have and you wanna upload it to your channel, or to go live. I can see great uses for these for, um, for teachers using uploading videos that you've already created, and going live for sure, I think that could end up being an exciting time for your students to join you live and get to see what you are sharing, presenting, um, reading, or demonstrating. Um, but then the cool thing is live, uh, when you're done, when you stop broadcasting, becomes a video that lives in your YouTube studio that you can then edit and, um, and share out however you want, whether that's publicly on your channel or privately as an unlisted link. So those are the two buttons, the features that are in, here in YouTube. And when you launch either one of these, it actually takes you to the YouTube studio. I'm gonna close my YouTube studio button or tab. All right, I hit create a video. So you can see right here, I can either drag and drop files over. I never really use this feature, but I know some people prefer this. Um, if I had a video in my downloads, um, here's one of them. If I wanted to just pull that over, I can drag it and drop it. And it's gonna upload here. Now I'm going to actually um, not do this. Um, upload a video, so I showed drag and drop. I usually just click select files. I'm more of a click and navigate person go to my downloads, or maybe it's in my videos, something I've saved locally to my system. The other one I wanna show you is YouTube on my phone. Sorry, I opened the wrong app. <laughs> ah, I should have had it pulled up to begin with. One moment. All right. Um, for this, I'm going to exit screen share mode. And I'm probably going to forget to go back when I go back because I always do. Maybe I won't since I said it out loud now. All right. You should be able to see. Let me turn off grid. Um, you should be able to see uh, my phone. And I opened YouTube, and that menu that pops up looks exactly like the menu that pops up when I am on um, the website. So this is the YouTube app. And then so I've got my channel that I can go to. 
So I can manage my videos from here. Or I can go into another app. Now in YouTube, it is another app. I can download the YouTube Studio app. Keep in mind on mobile, they're separate apps. Just wanted to show it on the phone um, because a lot of what I'm gonna show you, you can actually control from your, from your mobile phone. All right, I'm gonna remember to present again because I just told on myself. There we go. All right. So again, I'm in my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I wanna leave. All right, I'm in my YouTube channel. And I have clicked on the plus, the little camera with a plus sign. I showed you how to upload a video. I'm going to show you going live. Now, I didn't get into any settings yet. Uh, They're similar, but a little bit different how you get to them in each one. So we're going to show go live. It's getting a little bit more exciting in my trainings because I've now got a little over 200 subscribers. So they're about to get this that I am going live. So we'll see how this goes. Just in case I decide not to delete it later, I'll name it something that makes sense. All right, I'm gonna go live and I can decide right here if I wanna go live public, meaning anybody can see this. Unlisted, anyone with a link can view, or private, only I can view this. So maybe I wanna practice something. Um, for this one, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna go live public. You do have to indicate whether or not this is made for kids. All right. And then from here, you don't have to go into more options. That's the next part of our agenda. So I'll come back to that. All right, I'm gonna click next. Give me a smile for a thumbnail. Okay, so I can retake that if I want, if I blinked or just looked weird. I hate doing these live. All right, so then I've got a thumbnail. Or I can upload a custom one. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but on my YouTube channel, I take a version of our agenda and make a second page for it and I make my covers. Um, so that's how I do those. That's a custom thumbnail. This one, I'm just gonna go with the picture and I'm gonna click, if I click share here, you see this link? This is how I could have an um, a unlisted, like I could be live, but it's not going out on my YouTube channel for anybody in the world to see. So if I had picked unlisted, I can copy that and share it directly, maybe just to my school edu course, so my students see me, or just to my professional learning network, just so that my colleagues see me. So again, I just share here, okay? I can even embed it. So um, I have shown in some of my other um, trainings for Schoology how to embed video content. You can embed a live session into your course. So you can also set a start time if you wanted to. Um, again, we're getting into a little bit more advanced features, so I just wanted to make you aware of where the share was, because that question did come up when I shared YouTube one time. Well, if you don't make it, or if you do make it private, or un excuse me, unlisted, how do they get the link? What's right here in share? I'm just gonna go live now. And here we are, let's see. And now we're live. So I'm sharing go live right now with our group uh, in our virtual PD session from the Learning Technologies team, and I'm live right now. So I don't see anybody in here yet, but I might have this pre-planned where I'm going to read a book to my students um, every day for story hour, and I'm gonna do it on YouTube Live. I've got one person who just took in, so I know somebody is out there watching. Give me a thumbs up if you're in watching, and um, just click like so I can see you're in there. Now, if this was made for children, there would not be a live chat on there. So live chat would not be an option if it's made for students. It's a safety protocol. So um, I can say something via the chat. Hello, everyone. It's like I have two people in there now. So I'm going live, and you can imagine that I might grab my book. Here's the book. Total side note. My desk is a mess. But... If you're wanting to get away from app online applications and read something really cool and transformational, uh, this is one of my new favorite books to read, Reality Bites. Um, I think it's an ironic title for this day and age. So this is Reality Bites, and it's by um, the uh, Ready Learner One Network, uh, Christine Lyon-Bailey, Jesse Lubinsky, and Micah Shippey. Uh, Shippey. 
met them at some conferences I've attended. They're awesome. This is all about um, augmented and virtual reality in schools. So really, I'm just sharing this right now as a demonstration of going live. We've got a few more people going live with us. So you could have a whiteboard up behind you and solve a math problem. Um, you could, there's a number of things you can do. So I'm not going to get into too much more. Hey, there's Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Um, so this is going live. This is the very, very basics of going live. All right, for now, I am gonna end it because I wanna show what happens when I end the stream. So bye, Jessica, and whoever else is out there watching, thanks for clicking. Um, if you are a subscriber to someone and they go live, uh, if you turn on your notifications on your phone, you'll actually get um, an alert that somebody's going live that you follow. If I scheduled this as a broadcast, I'd get an alert that is coming up. Um, if I don't, they just get, if, if they're subscribed to you, they just get a notice that you've gone live. So you can do it on the fly like I just did, or you can schedule it in advance. So, and there's a million other things you can do too. I'm gonna click end stream because I'm gonna end it so you guys can see the end screen. All right, do, am I sure I wanna end it? Maybe I accidentally clicked it? Yes, let's end it. And that's it. So what it tells me is that there were seven playbacks of my live session, that there were four pe peak concurrence, there were four in there at once. Um, if I got any new subscribers during my go live, it gives me that. It get, just gives me my statistics of that session. There's a button here to edit in studio or dismiss. I like to click edit in studio and hop right in there. And what you'll notice is it opened up different looking than it does in my other YouTube studio. So as a compare and contrast, I'm gonna show that. YouTube, YouTube studio. You'll notice it said edit in studio. Well, this is my studio. These are my videos, okay? But this is live. So I'm editing this live one in studio. Now here's what's great. Let's say that you went live a few minutes before you actually wanted to broadcast, maybe just to have an informal chit chat. Um, if you're using this in a professional learning context, like with adults, you could have that live stream up where people are chatting with you. Again, remember with children, it's not going to be on there. And if you are ever streaming to children, you should mark, yes, it's for children, so that that live chat doesn't pop up. But afterwards, I can trim it. So let's say the beginning was just um, some fun, fluffy stuff, but it's not the core of what I want saved on my channel. I can trim the video there, and I can stop at any point, and I can get rid of that extra part. There's a few other things I can do, but again, I did say that what I'm not going to do is go too in-depth in settings until we get to advanced. But let's just say that I, I like it, I'm ready to um, go with this as it is. I gotta make like the slightest change so it gives me the cha save changes option. So I made my changes right there. I'm gonna snip that out. You'll notice that, um, uh, well, that wasn't it. Uh, <laughs> I can edit my details here. So I was down here in the settings. Nope, I wasn't, cancel. I was in the editor, sorry. I was in the editor. I can go up to details. And some of those things like I showed you before, putting um, the message on a video, this is in YouTube Studio. Editing the details is where the title can be adjusted. You can add a description. Hyperlinks do work in the description. If when you took your um, selfie, you didn't have your tile ready later, you can always upload a custom thumbna thumbnail um, later here. Let's see, I just click on this and click change. Um, I can maybe, uh, let's see, it wasn't made for kids, maybe it is, I don't, I don't know, but make sure if you go live, you do mark it. If it's made for kids that you say, yes, it is. All right, and that's, um, that's sort of the baseline settings. There's more options. I wanna make sure that I take questions on the basics before we get into more options. On my agenda, we still have to look at processing videos. So I jump straight to going live. Um, but if we upload that video, I wanna show some video processing steps. This. That was that one I uploaded to show as an example. All right, so that was a very quick going live.
Now I can, if there were changes, save. I didn't make any changes, whatever. Um, right here, the video, there's a link that you can copy right here. Um, and if I needed to get into that video and change the settings for some reason, like what it appears as, I can change it here. I'm not gonna change it actually though. All right. So let me go back to my studio videos. And what you'll notice is it doesn't appear here. Nope, it's in this little tab right here at the top that says live. And so all my live recordings are in here. And you'll notice most of them I either have unlisted, um, I don't think I have any marked private, but I don't share most of my uh, lives because I mostly just demonstrate it. All right, so again, in YouTube Studio, the videos you have uploaded are in the first tab. The lives that you have recorded are here in this tab. So you can make them private if you want people to not be able to ever see it. Um, and you can edit it, the little pencil, and that brings you into this right here. So that's going live and editing. I wanna do uploads um, and processing videos next. Ashley, is there anything on the current topics I need to answer from the chat? If there is, just go ahead and interrupt me, otherwise I'm gonna continue. You can keep going. Thank you. All right, I went back um, for this next part and I wanted to show you processing videos. So let me just backtrack. So from YouTube, my channel, I can just click the little plus button and we're gonna look at uploading a video. Now, what kind of videos might you upload? Well, if you use Google Meet and record them like I do, you might need to go into your Google Meet recordings folder. So I will show that. Oh, wrong folder. Uh, Meet recordings. Okay, so these are some of the um, recordings I've done recently. Um, Schoology courses from a parent's perspective. I'll look at this uh, video. Now I can view it here and I can share a link to this video as is, but then it has to be viewed within Google. Um, if any users are using a mobile device like a cell phone um, to view my Schoology course, um, Google Drive isn't the, the easiest app to watch a video in. It does still work. Um, but very often too, the, the default link is anyone, anybody at CPS with link can view, so then you're restricted to that domain. So what I like to do is go up here to the little download arrow and I download that video. It does warn me it can't scan for viruses. So far, so good. YouTube's approved with the district, so. All right, so it's downloading over here. Hopping back into the YouTube studio, if I select files or I drag and drop, um, I can go right into my downloads and I keep my downloads sorted not by name, but by date modified. So the newest thing that I just downloaded is always on the top. It's just a helpful little tip. So I've got this video, Schoology Courses from a Parent's Perspective. Okay, so it's got the title on it, but then it's got all this gunk at the end. I don't want that. It's what it pulled over. It's the timestamp from Google Meet. So instead I do wanna change it to, you know, um, Virtual PD. April 24th, 2020. Name it whatever makes sense for you. If you were going to be sharing, let's say that you had a, a Google Meet for your class and your students were there, but not all of them could attend at the time that you were live meeting, you could record that. And so it could be um, class meeting from and then the date. Now, if you do that, if you ever um, wanna upload to YouTube a video where you included your students, um, I'm going to jump to this because it's very important. You need to make sure that the video um, option is on unlisted. So again, if students are in it, um, to me, it doesn't even matter if you've got permission to photograph, photograph on all of them. If I had students in one of my videos, I would not ever share it public. I would share it as unlisted, and then that link would only be accessible in my Schoology course. But this one isn't. So then this is where my, media, uh, my description goes, details here. Don't forget that you can actually hyperlink to items or write to a course. 
if you I hyperlink to an item from your Google Drive that has uh, anybody at Cincinnati Public Schools can view setting on it or um, a Schoology course, you might want to note um, links will only work for dot, 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 whoever so that they know that they have to be signed in to view them. That's if you add a hyperlink. So let me show an example of a hyperlink that I would add to go with the Schoology from a parent's perspective. I would add the chat transcript, which I thought I already opened that. Ah, yeah, I did. Okay, so I did some editing on this. Um, you can ignore the top. It's just a custom message I add to the top of all my chat tr transcripts. Completely ignore the top. Uh, it opens up looking something like this. So if I wanted to share this, I could just click share, copy link. You'll notice it's anyone at Cincinnati Public Schools can view. I do that because the people in this chat discussion are from Cincinnati Public and nobody else needs to watch it. All right, so um, details here. Chat transcript link. And I just paste that link. Okay, so right now I'm in the topic of processing your videos. And what I've done is upload it. I've edited the name. I've edited the description. Thumbnail, you can import your own custom thumbnail. I think I made one for this one. No. No, sorry. I could really just pick anything right now, but I get I get weird about this stuff. Okay, so um, I'll just throw that on there. All right, so you could add your own custom thumbnail. So I like to make mine on uh, Google Slides because they fit nicely as a thumbnail there. You can add your own or you can pick another frame from in the shot or it will just randomly assign one. Okay, playlist. This is where I can add it to a playlist that I already have or I do have the option there to create a new playlist. So you can assign that video to a playlist right from the processing point when you're uploading the video. Here I'm going to say no, it's not made for kids. Just so you know, if it was yes, then it's not going to have personal ads. Notifications won't be available on videos made for kids. And a video that's set made for kids are likely to be recommended alongside other kids' videos. So keep that in mind. Then um, we're gonna go into the more options next, but for now, I'm just gonna hit next. Video elements, I've never used these, but cards can be um, related content that pops up during your video, an end screen, you would, these are all advanced settings we won't be getting into today, um, but these are elements you can add to your video. I always just click next through that. Here's where you determine, if it has students in it, please use unlisted or private only. Sometimes you might just be recording a meeting with your students for your own reflective practices. So you might wanna just watch it later and kind of, you know, pay attention to how you, um, how you phrase something, or you might just be new to recording yourself and want to um, refine your practices by watching a recording. You could just make it private and only you get to see that video. Unlisted, you have to share the link. So if I select unlisted and copy the link right here and now, sitting right over here, and copy it, and I've got it, or later I'll show you how to access it. Schedule, I can determine that it be released at a certain date or time. And Premiere, I th it becomes your Premiere video. I've never done that, um, but they can watch it together at the same time. So it's almost like a, a watch party could be created around your video. Um, oh, it actually does literally say a public watch page gets created. So that sounds fun. I, haven't, I have not dabbled into that yet, but especially if you're a specials teacher, like you're teaching art or PE, and you wanna go live with your students, that could be a really fun way to, to get them all at once. Um, Sorry, but that was a go live and we're in a video um, editing tool, so don't do that. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna schedule this one. Um, save or publish. So instead of scheduling, I'm saving it or publishing. I'm gonna make mine public. All right, then check the following. Do kids appear in the video? Make sure that you follow policies and guidelines if they do. Um, looking for overall content guidance. I'm gonna hop, pop open this tab for um, more information about YouTube. And then I would love to get into the um, advanced features, but that's the last topic. I'm gonna hit publish. And I did not hit my goal of having all the content done by 240. All right, that's okay. 
So it'll probably take me five more minutes to go into the advanced settings, which we are going to do. So then what it lets me know is that um, the, de the standard definition SD version of my video needs to finish processing in the YouTube app before the video is made public. So video is processing, and that can take a little while to show up. So you don't wanna hop right to your YouTube channel and try to find your video because it often doesn't appear for a little bit of time. The video is rendering or publishing, up, excuse me, processing before it publishes. So I'm going to show some advanced settings right now and show you how you can get to them. So in my YouTube studio, if I click on videos, I can go to any video. You can see that this one is still pending. I can still go in and edit it while it's pending though. It's just pending to publish. That doesn't mean I can't edit it. So I've got some options here. I can just do a quick edit of the title and description and I got to that through this three dot menu. This is actually just called more in Google, like an ellipsis going down vertically. Just learned that recently. So click on this more options button. You can edit the title and description or just grab your shareable link right there. Maybe you didn't get it on that first page where I showed you you could copy it. You can promote it. Um, or you can delete it forever. Now, once it's saved, you can also download your own videos. But I'm gonna go into editing details for some advanced options that I recommend for everybody. All right, um, this first page uh, over here to the right now appears the visibility. It will tell me when it's public later. Um, it tells me if it's on a playlist and if not, I can add it there. I can edit um, end screens and things like that. Those aren't the details I wanna get into, but I wanna get into this more options. Now, if I had selected advanced while I was uploading, this would appear um, down the line. So I would keep scrolling after I hit advanced, but now it's in the more options. All right, I do like to stamp mine with a recording date. So I think this was the 24th. Um, you can put location if you want. I don't usually do that. Um, I give it the category of education, okay? YouTube lets you tag the category of your video. Now, some other things that it will let you do is origin video language and subtitles. So um, we're gonna make it so that if somebody needs subtitles, I'm telling the program that I am speaking English, United States, which it does make a difference if you're UK or US English, so I select English United States, and then I just have to certify that it has never aired on TV. So it's not um, restricted for closed captioning. All right, there is um, a point here where I can upload a text file um, without timing. Um, I can upload my subtitles. Here I just, if I enable this, this is how some people can do a closed captioning or, or, or set um, subtitles while they're viewing. So it's not something I include while I'm recording, but I turn that on in the more options or the advanced settings when I'm processing a video. Comments and ratings, I gotta tell you something folks, people are not kind all the time. So I usually select hold potentially inappropriate comments for review, but to be really honest with you, when I first started this, I disabled all comments. I was like, I don't know, people might not say any nice things and I try to keep things positive. All right, so um, you can sort the comments by newest at the top um, or Top means if other people liked it, it would go up in the top. All right, when uh, you hold them for review, you do to get a notification from YouTube if there is a comment being held for you to review. So it'll walk you through approving or um, rejecting that comment. So the rest of this, um, this is a default allow embedding. Yes, you should allow embedding. That's how we can put our videos straight into Schoology or different platforms like that. Um, my video doesn't contain a paid promotion, so I don't have to do that. So right up there, I hit save. And that was a quick walk through some of my recommended um, advanced settings on video processing. Please bear in mind that in my channel videos, I can add those settings also to a live. Some of it was already there. And so for that, I've got all the same settings here. Click on more options and I can go into those advanced settings. So, but I just have to toggle um, in YouTube Studio over to my live videos if I want to edit those. And that's my agenda, folks. It took me 44 minutes instead of 40. Not bad. Um, but I am ready now for your questions. What do you got for me? 
Uh, we'll start with Ashley for anything that could have come up in the chat. And then if not, we're gonna popcorn out some questions with some unmute microphones. But please hold your, uh, keep yourself muted until we're done here. Glory, I, I, I don't, I, she was the last person that asked the question. She said she sent out a Google Meet video. Could, a, could she make a Google Meet video go public? Um, um, so we're not going to make um, Google Meet go public. There is a way to set Google Meetings as a live stream. That's not the topic of today's TV. I might have another one on that because um, I'm looking at streaming with meetings as well. Uh, but that's not a topic that we're covering in here today. So I don't, I don't want to waste anybody's time be answering an off-topic question. Um, if you do go public accidentally, you can't always change the link anytime. You just go into your YouTube studio and you edit that, um, that video setting. So in your YouTube studio, when you click on videos, everything appears here. If you went live and you accidentally selected public and you don't want that anymore, you can just change it right here. So if I wanted that to be um, unlisted, I'd select that and then I can just share the link. Uh, next question. Can you download videos from WeVideo? Yes, you can, Avery. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the download feature, um, you would just, what I showed you in Google Meet, there's, uh, you can download your WeVideos to your Google Drive. Um, some people send them straight to Google Drive. Uh, to, to put them into YouTube, you do have to download them first to your device and then upload them. Uh, much earlier during this pandemic, I thought that there was just a way that I didn't know. Um, I Check it out. You do have to download your video first so you can upload it to your device. So you have to have it on your device somehow, unless you're going live and you're recording right into YouTube that way. Anything else, Ashley? Jessica oh. asked, can you string? Oh, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> I can see it now. Yep, I'm back on the screen. Yeah, mo multiple videos in YouTube. So I would, if you're wanting to create, um, a continuous video, yes, you would use a video editing tool like WeVideo. That's where you are taking video clips or segments and piecing them together. However, a really cool way to work um, to, to work with that is to create playlists and you could put them in as like chapters. You could make a playlist and you could have each separate video be like the next chapter. I'm going to show playlists because this is an awesome feature. So I'm gonna go into my channel. And I'm going to go into my playlists, and I'm going to open the um, Tech Talk tidbits. So when you view full playlists, what you could do is describe the video, and then you could have each one named Chapter 1, Chapter 2, or Part 1, Part 2. And what you can do when you share the link, you might have noticed this when I was in my uh, channel. If I copy this link address, and I maybe post that in my Schoology or something, it opens up to the playlist, all playing, and you'll notice that it said play all. So it will just play them all. That's a cool little way to work around actually not doing the video editing, Jessica. You could just put them in a playlist and share the play all link. Or you could share the view full playlist link, and then you could tell them that here's the intro video, and click on the rest of the videos. You can number them or sequence them in a way that makes sense. And then that way the videos sort of become like this um, singular experience. So you don't have to go through video editing in um, WeVideo. You could string them together uh, per se with YouTube playlists. So you could do either one. You could put them all together in WeVideo and edit them in there, or you could create a playlist. Um, can you do a playlist inside a playlist? Inception style, Jessica? Ha ha. Wow. All right. This, I love a good challenge. This to me would be where maybe my last, ooh. My last video, I would probably just suggest, I'm on the fly here. I would probably just suggest that I open up by saying, click on video details, and I would link to my next playlist. So that's how I would sort of chain them together. Or if I was presenting it in Schoology, I might make, I might make one hack that takes them through each one. 
because you already basically have a playlist for all your steam videos yep perfect yeah i would i would do it that way all right other questions ashley it looks like there's no more in the chat so what we're going to do right now is we're going to use our best classroom procedures um if you are unmuting keep in mind that if you have a tv on in the background barky dogs or kids we're going to hear all of it so um you don't have to all unmute at once but what we can do is unmute and then what happens is we do questions popcorn style the first one to speak i answer your question if two of you start at once just be um courteous one of you back down and let's go we're going to popcorn out the questions for the last 10 minutes um, also, too, if I am answering one question and you can't get a word in, please put it in the chat. Ashley uh, will interrupt me. All right, go ahead and unmute and ask your questions. YouTube is very user friendly. I found it extremely easy to pick up, use, and make it work right away for me. So maybe there's not a lot of questions. Okay, what I'm gonna look at if there aren't questions is playlists where you're not creating content. So the title of the session was using YouTube. So I could show some other video examples. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start showing something, but if you have a question, just go ahead and interrupt me. All right, let's forget about you um, uploading or going live. Let's just say you wanna use YouTube and you're gonna go and look up biology videos, you are of course going to do a very good job of looking for videos that either came from your curriculum maps or are referred to in the remote learning packet or just you're gonna use a teacher best practices. I'm going to do a what you should not do right now. All right, let's say that I found these videos on bi biology. This one is a playlist. See, it says play all, view full playlist. This one is just a single video. So I'm looking for bi biology videos. There are many playlists. Let's say that I'm gonna view this full playlist. Now, if I click right on it, it's gonna start playing all of them. And let's say that, oh, these are some of the topics I needed. Well, here's what I can do. I can click on these three dots here, save to playlist, and I can create a new playlist. Like, let's say I'm just gonna name it um, biology. So I can create a new playlist. biology and then that has been added now as i go through and i explore more of the videos i can just save them to playlists and click biology and it's done and so i can go through and i can quite quite quickly add them to playlists the other kind of awesome thing is i can add them to multiple playlists so i may have a playlist for my um biology regular you can tell i'm not a high school science teacher Biology 101 or, or basic biology, AP biology, honors biology, and I might have different lists based on those. So when I hit save to playlist, I can actually select multiple lists. As soon as I select them and close it, it adds them. So I can quickly create my own playlist. And now when I'm back in my channel, on my playlist tab, I now have a biology playlist already made. Guys, it was that fast. You can, you can put together video content in playlists faster than you can do a lot of things. Now, what's cool in Viewful Playlist, once you go in, you can edit all the content in this. So I can make it public or unlisted. Um, I can edit the title. I can give it a full description. So I could go into like why I selected these videos. I hit cancel on these. Um, in the more option, I can add more videos to it. Uh, I can add collaborators. So maybe me and the whole biology uh, team, the, the whole science department in my building might wanna collaborate on creating this playlist. I can go into the playlist settings itself. I can allow embedding. I can turn on add new videos to the top of playlists. That's what I um, like to do for my tech talk tidbits and things like that. Okay, advanced settings. Just like anything else, there are advanced settings for all of this. So I can um, set as an official series for the playlist. There are so many things in here, guys. Enjoy, oh, this one's not eligible, okay. Um, I can auto add 
I can add a rule for videos to be automatically added. Um, I love collaborators. Guys, we all need to be better collaborators. So think about maybe having, um, I'll hit cancel now. Yeah, okay, cancel. All right, so now I'm in my um, biology playlist and I've edited some of the details to that. All right. I'm gonna go, whoop, I'm, I meant to go back to my channel, not home. Okay, we've got five minutes left. Any other questions pop up? Ashley is probably dropping the um, contact hours and feedback form here shortly. Oh, cool. Avery, can you hold the space bar to talk? What? In Google Meet? I didn't know. That. Oh, wow. Okay, my computer didn't like that trick, but cool trick. Thanks, Avery. Okay, no other questions. I always take this to mean that everybody's either tired, hungry, or I just did such an excellent job describing it to you that you got it and you're ready to use YouTube now. You're ready to create and upload your own videos. You're ready to go live and um, add those videos to your own playlists. You're ready to search YouTube videos that the district has recommended in your picture guides and create playlists for your students, um, that you've got this. All right. So at the end of it, Ashley has provided our contact hour feedback form. I do like to walk through this with our um, participants. If you've already done this um, and you want to get off the line now, you can. Um, just make sure you grab the link before you hang up. Um, in your contact hours and feedback form, you do have to include your employee ID number if you are wanting your contact hours tracked. The topics that we covered today was YouTube. That's all we covered. Um, excuse me, indicate your school. And then today is, can you believe it, May the 4th. I haven't heard one May the 4th be with you joke today. I'm a little bummed. All right, indicate the date. It was 2 p.m. There we go. And then what type of training was this? If you're here with me now live, you are um, on the second option, joined virtual PD session. If you're watching this later on my YouTube channel, you viewed a recorded virtual PD session. And so I do have links to this at the top of my chat transcript, which is all found in the more area under my video details, so including the feedback form. Um, so again, right now you joined a virtual PD session. This was 30 minutes and one hour time frame, And in this call is Ashley Badgett moderating your chat and me, Rosemary Jane. Please rate us on um, this training. And then um, we really value your additional comments if you could take a moment to put them in there. If you'd like to attend more training opportunities from the Learning Technologies team, the schedule, the full schedule is linked right there. You can view that. I'd like to point out to those of you who having a hard time viewing, that if you go to view, you can present it and make it a whole full screen, or you can also just go to Zoom and make it bigger. But um, Adam has posted this reminder here. There are 71 people in there right now does slow down like the way that it loads and everything. So please, when you are done, exit the tab. Um, our Tech Talk course is also linked in there. That's where you get updates about these opportunities. And if these options don't work for you, you need further training on a specific topic, you can click right here on our CPS training request. Also too, if you're having any technical difficulties or need support from our ITM help desk, the email's there as well. Everybody, I've had a lot of people reach out to me over the last few weeks asking me, um, if they got counted or if they're gonna be getting credit, you can actually just flip that switch there and get a copy of your own responses. So you'll have that uh, record in your email. So I recommend you do that. And with that, it is 12 or 2.59, and I am literally done with a minute to spare. This might be the first time this year. All right, I think honestly, it's because YouTube is that easy. Um, it really walks you through everything you need to do. So yep, later on today, it'll be on my YouTube channel. Um, please give me till the end of the day. Sometimes I don't upload them until right before I go to bed. On rare occasion, I get it done the next morning. But generally, I get them uploaded that night. So that's it, guys. That's all I have for you. Um, with that, I'm going to stop the recording.